let's dive into the fun question of it all, right? Who do we want under with our team? Because, you know, when we go to the go-kart track, as much as we go to win, it should be to enjoy it because it's a, it's a hobby, it's a pastime, and it's a passion and an industry you want to smile when you're around. So, um, Mike, would you like to lead it off again here? Because you've been doing a great job all night. What are some red flags of drivers or parents? You're like, man, I, I really don't even know. No matter what check he'd want to write me for me to coach him, do I want to deal with that? Well, usually with a driver, the first thing is when you're telling them something or explaining and you can't even finish a sentence and they're already interrupting you saying, but, 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 they're not listening. Or you explain something to them and then they're talking about something totally different. They're not soaking it in what you're telling them. And we're just there to try to help them and make them go faster. So we just want a driver that listens and goes and debriefs. They want to come back 10 minutes later and talk about something else and that's fine. At least I know they retained what I told them or what the data guy told them or the video guy told them. Because sometimes I'll have the video guy come to me, and go, you know, somebody's not really listening. I'm trying to explain something to them in turn three, but they're talking about turn five. So that means they're not paying attention. They're, they're thinking about something else. If you slow everything down, then everything else will go your way. On the parents, everyone's different, right? So I've been in the sport long enough that everyone is unique, I'll call it. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> So I try not to take anybody the wrong way, but you're dealing with their child, right? And they're the one paying the bill. So you're going to hear some weird things sometimes. Sometimes it's going to be outlandish. But the reason they're asking you questions because they don't know, right? I used to kind of used to kind of irk me a little bit, but when you sit down and you talk to them, they're asking the questions because they honestly don't know. So you have to explain it to them. So I've never heard of a stupid question. Right? I've learned that when I went to school when I was a kid. Right? A teacher says there's no such thing as a stupid question. The only thing that's stupid is when you don't ask a question. So I try to go at it like that. And anytime somebody asks me something, I think like that. And then when you talk to them and they really didn't know, and then everything's okay and ask her. I mean, I never really get too many complaints or anything like that. They're just asking questions. Why are we 30th? Because your, your kid's a 30th place driver. They don't have that much experience, right? If they keep taking the green, if they can take the checkered flag, good things are going to happen. That's what I tell somebody that goes to a national the first time. Take the green and take the checkered. If you take the checkered and stay on the track every lap, you're going to get good results. You're going to do do better than you think. We had a kid at Road America, never came to a national. I think there was like 48 KAs. This kid's running around 28th, 30th. He comes in. I go, how was it out there? He goes, I've never had so much fun in my whole entire life. This is a blast, my first national. Now I have the other kid on the other side of the tent. He's in sixth place and he's powering, right? Carding is supposed to be fun. You can't win them all. There's a winner and there's a loser. I just try to tell everyone, just do the best you can to get good results and everything else will work out. I mean, if you're powering, I know I, I raced, I'm a powder, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'd be that guy just because I want to win and I'm competitive. But you try to explain to everybody like you can't win every time. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Race. Um... You know, you've you've grown your brand, grown the chassis over the last couple of years from the ground up and spent a good amount of time with especially brand new parents. You know, obviously, Ryan and Mike and Brandon all have guys at the club level. But I'd say at everyone, you probably spent the most time getting brand new people into the sport with Race Factory. Uh, what are some stuff you notice with new parents and something you could give them as like advice? So like, hey, you know, think of it this way. Um, yeah. So, I mean. Getting anybody new into the sport, it's, it's not an easy sport to get into, um, you know, and, and just hit the ground running, uh, especially now that you're seeing, you know, you're talking to your pro guys over here in the running club races. So, you know, trying to go up against that for your first have at it uh, is extremely hard when there's got, you know, those guys have some knowledge. So we've got a setup manual and the curriculum that we put together uh, for anybody that's new getting into karting because that is our sole focus. Of course, we're there to compete. But at the end of the day, I'm my, my passion for the sport is getting new people into seats. Um, so having some sort of a curriculum together for them to learn uh, next year, we're going to start doing some training camps, not only for the drivers, but also for the parents slash mechanics. Um, and just really just try and educate people on the basics of karting, uh, what to expect, the right ladder system, even in karting to take. I, I feel like you see a lot of guys hit nationals way too early in their careers and they either get burnt out or, um, you know, they start, it just causes problems when they think they're little Johnny's the best at the club race. Why is he not winning 
the super nats and you got to try and put it in perspective when it's almost too late so uh we build a, we're trying to build a ladder system and kind of show people which paths to take first uh so they can have a, a successful carding into hopefully car's career eventually but to comment on what you don't want um you know us we like to have fun and like like everybody's saying here if you know we all do this because we love it um because we manage to have fun at it and i'm, I'm sure anybody that comes by the race factory tent knows after hours we have a damn good time and you know, if there's parents that aren't down for that, then they're just not cut out for us. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Ryan, you got any any no goes under your tent or anything you tell a parent like, hey, don't come with me if you're this, or, or come with me to, to learn that? Yeah, we just don't want any uh, animosity between the the parents. That's the biggest thing. Like everybody has to get along in the tent. You know, that uh, that can get uh, pretty interesting if it doesn't happen smooth like that you know but uh we're willing to work with anyone that wants to get better and, and listen like mike said and um we have all different levels of drivers and we work with different drivers at the local level and regional level and then we have a different group that, that goes to the national level and we have some of those some of those drivers are trying to transition into national level racing and we just try to you know let them know it's not it's not like try not to look at your progress race by race like let's look at your progression from the beginning of the season to the end and then evaluate how how you did at that point because a lot of people just get frustrated and and uh the last thing that you want to do is uh have people get burned out and get out of the sport so it's just about helping them get better and, and having realistic ex expectations yeah, no kidding. Uh, Brandon, speaking of realistic expectations, we were talking just before you came on the air. You had a kid this weekend at a, a GoPro club race. Um, you know, he had been running for, what, six months, right? You dropped his times about nine tenths of a second with you and having Polly coach him. Um, yeah. Deal with new parents were, you know, has, has it been more or anything different than what you thought of now that you've basically got a full team program at GoPro club races? I mean, uh, I've kind of experienced it for a little while working um, – with Mike for so long and working with uh, all different kinds of parents. But I feel like uh, it's really hard, like along with what Ray said, running the club races at GoPro, it's so hard to to teach new people because you're almost jumping in against like all the pros. Like you have Paulie there, you have Connor running, you have all like the top couple guys running at a club level. So a lot of people have like a, a higher expectation and you just got to, work on them one at a time and, and try and get them better. Like for example, this kid this weekend, we improved his time by eight, nine tenths and he had the same lap times as the leaders and he was going really fast, but, uh, but his race craft was not very good. So now we have to go back next for the next club race and work on his race craft. So it's just taking one step at a time and, and working on him. And along with like what Mike said, the, uh, with the parents, a lot of them just don't, don't really understand it. But if you take the time to explain what they want to know with, with, the question they're asking then they don't become like annoying or anything like that then they they ask you more intelligent questions and you, they they learn and help you all at the same time 